Welcome to the world of Jones Nose. There's another type of vinyl installation that we don't talk about too often. It's glue down vinyl plank. The material costs less, it's a little more durable, less money. Is it an option for you? Let's find out today on Jones Nose. Hi, my name is Tim. I'm a flooring and stair contractor. I've been doing this for over 20 years. Helping me in the videos are my sons, Tristan and Hunter. So today I want to take you out to an office building where we just recently installed 1,250 feet of vinyl flooring. We glued it down. Uh, glue down vinyl flooring is an option that we don't discuss too often. It's used a lot in commercial settings, but I do it a lot in residential as well. Uh, it's a great alternative uh, if you're trying to save a little bit of money and you want something that's very very durable um, it's a good option for areas that are going to be wet a lot basements maybe kitchens bathrooms uh, it's a it's a very very durable product so it's used a lot in commercial settings if you want a floor that feels really really solid glue down vinyl is definitely the floor for you a material on it costs anywhere from uh, 69 cents to uh, a decent one is usually $99, $29. Of course, they go up from there. Uh, there's always going to be some higher end products on the market, uh, but it's a lot less money compared to um, LifeProof, Nucor, and some of the other products that start at $3. So let's get started with the uh, going over the installation. So, first thing when you're doing glue down vinyl, you have to have a smooth, and flat subfloor. So part of the room was tile here and we used a razor scraper to get off any of the remaining uh, tile thin set. We didn't remove the tile. It was done by a uh, member of uh, building maintenance. So they did a pretty decent job. Hey, this is Max here. He's trying to get my attention right now, my rag doll. But you have to make sure it's smooth. So they did the tile removal, but they left a little bit of thin set. So we went over it with a razor scraper um, for uh, probably over an hour. Then we swept, vacuumed, then swept and vacuumed again. It has to be free of any debris, dust, um, anything that's going to get in the glue. Uh, you want to get proper adhesion to the concrete. So um, what I'll typically do is leave an area that we can work off of. So I'll lay out five or six boards, figure out where they come to an end, and then I'll put a mark, measure that mark, go to the other end of the room, and whatever that distance is, put a mark on that one, and then we'll snap a line there. What that does is it gives me a nice straight line, obviously, so I know where to start laying the floor off of. And also, when i filling that area in with vinyl and glue, I won't have to make a rip because I've laid out even amounts. So uh, in our case here, I think we use five or six boards. I won't have to do any kind of cutting along this wall where we end at. So that makes it a little bit easier down the road. And also whenever you're working with any kind of adhesive, whether it's wood flooring adhesive, vinyl adhesive, anything, we always work with chalk lines. Usually where we start and then most of the time where we end if we're not going to finish the room out because you don't want to have areas of glue sticking out past your last board. In our case here, that was um, what we did in the uh, room at the end of this run. Uh, we had a kitchenette area here uh, where we had a starting and an ending line because we didn't want to spread this whole, even though it was a little room, we didn't want to spread the whole thing and have to work and reach into the room. Um, we wanted to make it or keep it organized and we spread a, I think it was a 30 or 36 inch wide area so that we were able to get into the room, step over to glue, lay it, um, and then on day two, go ahead and spread the rest of this um, and finish it then. You have to allow time for glue to set. In our case here, uh, we had two different subfloors basically. Well, it was the same subfloor, but one had carpet uh, where it was glued down carpet and the other had, area had tile. The area with the tile, the glue set in under an hour or about an hour. Uh, the area that had carpet, uh, the old carpet glue, which is similar to the glue that we were using, the pressure sensitive, um, even after we scraped it off, it was still in the concrete pores. Uh, so it penetrated the concrete and it 
cause the glue to dry very, very, very slow. We're working with Henry's pressure sensitive adhesive here. Um, with pressure sensitive adhesive, uh, they do take some time to set. So what we'll usually do is snap our chalk lines, measure an area where we want to spread the glue out, spread the glue. Often we go home for a while or to another job and then come back later and lay the floor, sometimes even the next day, depending on uh, when we put it down. So in our case here, uh, we got here at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, 8 or 9 in the morning, it was a Saturday. Um, we spread the glue. By the time we prepped everything, it was noon um, when we spread the glue and we came back at 6 o'clock at night. But we came back six hours later and then we laid pretty close to seven or eight hundred feet of floor, maybe even more, in about an hour. So that tells you how fast glue down vinyl goes. Once you have the glue down um, and the glue is tacked up and set and ready to go, you can lay it in a really fast time because there's no tongue and groove. It's just a matter of putting the two edges together. Um, now you want to put them tight because once you place that board in the glue, it's not going to slide or move around. There's no tapping or anything. Um, so when you put it down, you actually have to make sure it's right up against the other boards because you're not going to be able to slide it. Pressure sensitive adhesive grabs and it does not let go. So we laid all that, that footage and then before that was at like 8 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock at night, we finished. We put the glue down for the rest of the job, which is another three or 400 feet. We came back the next morning, 8 a.m., and laid the rest of the floor, and the glue was still perfect to work with. Now that being said, uh, after the installation, it's still we like to go ahead and roll it with a 100-pound roller. We're going to go both directions, long ways, cross ways, and make sure that it's pressed. It's pre pressed. Make sure that the vinyl is pressed into the glue completely. Uh, so if you don't have a 100-pound roller, don't worry. Um, the improvement stores rent them and they're very inexpensive to rent. I think five or ten dollars a day. I don't know. I own the roller, but um, I think I've rented it when I've worked out of town before and they're not, they're not expensive to rent. So as we were doing that, my other son finished it off with 5180, five and a quarter inch baseboard uh, to give it a really nice look. And in fact, we're going to actually finish the baseboard off on the bottom with some quarter round next weekend when we go to do another area in the building, just because we want to make it look really uh, tight to the floor. And they had some previous floating that was done there on the edges because of some steel support on the front and back of the building that um, caused the floor to be just a little wavy. Uh, they didn't care about it. It's a commercial site. I would have floated it if it was for a homeowner or something to make it look less obvious and we wouldn't have needed quarter round, but it's not my call. I just do what I'm told. So um, we're going to finish it off with some quarter round at the bottom. If you see gaps under the base, it's not complete yet. Uh, you could have also scribed it. They want a quarter round. They're doing quarter round in the kitchenette area along the front of the cabinets. Anyways, so hey. More money to me, right? Yeah, you tell them. But glue down vinyl is a great option. It's like I said, it's less money, it's super durable, really solid, and it looks great. You finish it off with base or trim just like a normal floor, and you got yourself a lifetime floor probably. Uh, it's really, really durable. You're never going to want to remove it because you can use it to go right over one day if you're tired of it or you want to do a new floor. Um, I used to use vinyl a long, long time ago as a vapor barrier. Well, sheet vinyl, but same thing, basically. So you can definitely glue to it or float over it without any problem. And you have yourself a great floor for a fraction of the price. What more can you ask for, right? Well, I hope you found this video useful and informative. Be sure to check out some of our other videos on how to vinyl installation as well as laminate, wood, stairs, and more. As I say around here, take out your favorite floor mount, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos.